What's up, Airheads? We're back here in the digital Airstream studios. Well, I'm in the Airstream studio, but uh, Comrade Cho there is <laughs> is in a whole different studio. I know that's I know that's not uh, that's not a comrade uniform, but you look very you know war for potato hey. like yes, hey. rally people. Give me all beans, and I give you some beans. Yes, hey. yes. Uh, yes. yeah. I'm in I'm in what's known as Airstream South. You know, there you go. I like it. I, I just haven't set it up uh, to quite reflect the show yet because this was all I this was all done very impromptu because we just got through making my downstairs office the baby room and I had to move all my stuff up top. So this was all thrown together just so I could get functional. But yeah, I'm about to get like a candelabra and some drapes or something, make it super POA. But for right now, it's just wrestling shit and Titan stuff. Right on. So, listen, Airheads, as we informed you a couple of weeks ago, this is the first episode of what will be uh, for the near indefinite period, our new format. Uh, Producer Russ is now officially no more. Rest in peace. We shall miss him. All the best to him in the future. Uh, But now we've got uh, Producer Dale. Cho, you want to tell everybody about uh, Producer Dale a little bit? Yeah, we got real, real lucky. As soon as uh, producer Russ ran off in the middle of the night, we we worried for a second, and then I uh, I got a phone call from a fellow that I've known basically, well, actually my entire life, and was like, "Hey, if y'all are gonna have to be doing it remote anyways, on account of you're about to have a baby, and Trey's got an insane tour schedule and all that." then I, I could help you out. Like, you know, I've never really done podcasts before, but I've been editing videos and shooting stuff my entire life. And that man is Dale Forster, my father. And so yeah. dad, dad is going to be on the ones and twos producing the show. And I think he's going to do an incredible job because he's never not. Right. I agree. I just realized though, the naming convention probably isn't going to work. We're going to need to figure it like, cause you know, I just said producer Dale because producer Russ, but you're not going to call him producer Dale, obviously. Yeah, I will. We call, yeah, I will. Mean, uh, well, I mean, yeah. I'm saying we could also call him like I don't know, Papa producer, Pro Papa Pop, producer, something like that. Like I some, like, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I like Papa producer, Big Papa producer, Big that Papa producer. I like, yeah, the BPP. Yeah. I like the that. BPP. <laughs> we solved it. The BPP, <laughs> Big Papa yeah. producer. Uh, so I'm and, sure and like how Joe too. Rogan. <laughs> Yeah, so like how Joe Rogan says, young Jamie, pull that up. We'll say, hey, Big Papa producer, holler yeah. at that shit. Yeah. Yeah, we down with BPP. Yeah, and I Big think that people producer. I think that people should really love this because people always say that they love family businesses and supporting, you know, local and stuff like that. And this is now like truly a family business. You know what I mean? We're grassroots. We got my dad sitting at the house right now while – He's probably doing this while my mom is watching season three of Father Brown or something like that. So uh-huh. we really appreciate him being here. And this is uh, Putting On Airs 2.0 with Big Papa producer Dale. Right on. So uh, later on in this episode, my topic, um, it's perhaps a little bit, I don't know if you call it a reach or not. It's one of those things that everybody does, but I had a personal experience lately that had it on my mind. So I want to talk about uh inheriting stuff the vast yeah. differences in what people tend to inherit depending on their socioeconomic position so i'm going to talk about that and then history with producer cho is on the subject of producer cho is that right is that what i said sorry you we talk a ton of all this producer talk history with i mean professor i have cho. been i have been the producer for the past two weeks for the record right pro pro cho history with pro pro, pro, cho. pro cho is on uh julius caesar i don't know if you heard of him but uh, fancy son of a bitch very fancy son of a bitch so we're going to be talking about him his uh an overview of his life uh i've got some pretty cool fun facts about him and uh yeah i've I've really enjoyed binging this son of a bitch for the past couple days it's been fun one of my favorite shows which was on stars spartacus they had a mm-hmm. they had an episode in later seasons where julius caesar gets brutally sodomized and that's just what oh I nice of when that came up yeah yeah that have show you seen Ro- have you seen rome on hbo i just recently tried to get katie into rome because i've always heard it's yeah. great even though it's only like two seasons or whatever because it got yeah. too expensive for them or something like that and uh but I, but I, Katie, you know, we I tried to watch the pilot. She just wasn't interested at all. So I'm gonna probably watch it by myself on the road or something. So you didn't you? So but in the pilot, did you see who played Caesar? 
Yeah, it's uh, it's Kieran Mance or Rider. Sarah Hines, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mance Ryder. I, I, I think that's Kier. I don't know. I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong, but C I A R A N yeah. Hines. Yeah, he hits. I thought that was a, a a unique choice for Caesar, but I'm into it. Yeah, he does hit. So that's what we're going to be doing uh, here directly. But first. If you're uh, if you're into the extended skew universe, Airheads, then y'all know about Smart Mark, and Smart Mark sent Corey a lovely clip <laughs> that we thought was very very appropriate for POA. So uh, BPP, if you want to cue up that clip here, this is British Parliament. I think it's an old clip, right? It's from like the it's late from 90s the nineties or something. It's like yeah. it's from nineteen ninety eight, but I I don't think that they're any less silly now. When uh, this, I don't think so either. But just so pay attention now when this clip starts. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Watch what this guy has to do in order to be able to speak. Uh, I think that we should have yeah, okay. we we set it I'd up come. a little bit more, and that's my that's fault. True. But what is happening here? I, I'm I'm certain that this clip stands alone as funny. But what's happening uh, here is the they had an uh, opera hat Rome, during this amendment, time in Parliament, and it was basically like, it, tell me if I'm uh, wrong, Trey, but vote, you know how when you're going around the room and like every you hold the ball and that means you can talk, right? It's that, but with an opera hat, and she wouldn't let him continue. Gentleman is indulging in a lot of wishful yeah, it's thinking. Yeah, she's so beautiful, it's beautifully whimsical and British. And also, I think that uh, I think that that hat, and maybe all opera hats do this. I'm a little opera hat dumb, but uh, it's like collapsible, right? So he yeah. like he like pops it open. Yeah. It's like she says he's not allowed to talk, right? Unless he's got the hat. You know, give him the hats, and then I'll hear him. Otherwise, I simply <laughs> cannot. Right. And so he, somebody hands him the hat. He pops it out. Throw, and the way he sits down too is very. Oh, it's know. great. It's just it, tremendous. He pops that hat on, sits down, legs crossed. And he's like, yes, Madam Speaker, as to the Treaty of Rome, you know, and like, I didn't understand any, anything of no. what the hell he was talking about after that, but I still really liked it because it just seemed so, yeah, so perfect and so British, I thought. But apparently well, it was, uh, it was, you know, a wee bit of uh, whimsical absurdity to, uh, based on how they reacted to it in the chamber, you know. With titters of laughter, and then uh, <laughs> and then shutting it down in uh, due course. Well, a couple things. Number one, if you saw that hat, how many tries would it take you before you landed on? Oh, that's an opera hat. I mean, it just looked like a top hat to me. A top, yeah, I is would call top that a top hat, hat. Is a top hat an art? Are all top hats opera hats? I don't know. Maybe an opera hat is one that collapses, and I didn't know. Right. I, I didn't know that those collapsed, but that's because uh, I, I was mean, just going with you on that. Uh, did, was that written in the description or something? They called it. What made you call that an they, opera hat instead of a top they, hat? They called it that in the description. Okay. It said right. in. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember in 1998 the, uh, the the they weren't allowed to talk unless they had their opera hat on. Uh, and also what he looked like to me when he did that was like, he, he, he sort of looked like a Charlie Chaplin character. Like he really yep. had, he really yeah. had that down. You know what I mean? Like the hat collapsed, he collapsed. It was super Very exaggerated. Did they still wear wigs? I was actually just yeah. about to say, I wonder how old the hat thing was. I wonder if it supplanted the wigs or what, because I feel like, you know, it's a hat on a hat or a hat on a wig, which is you right, know, right. A, a type yeah. of hat really. But yeah, I was thinking like if they was doing that when they still had the big powdered wigs on, I don't know. That doesn't seem practical to me. Maybe when they went away Agreed. from the wigs, they were like, well, we're going to need a hat except they all used to wear the wigs. So they had to have some way to denote it's your time to talk. Everybody else be quiet. Right. So maybe it was opera hat on top of a powdered wig. They silly boy. They, you know they they, silly they, they are silly, but like I do kind of think that's a good practical approach to government. Where it's like the on, the only way that we can keep everybody from shouting and talking over is so if you ain't got the goddamn hat on, you don't get to talk. And I know we don't get political on this show, but like maybe our government needs a little bit of whimsy sort of to provide levity to the whole thing. Well, I think we're talking about two different things here, sort of, because like I don't know what the rules are in our Congress, but I do know there are rules about like, you know, the senator from Iowa has the floor like you yeah, have right. to. 
you're granted the floor and then you're allowed to talk. And if you don't have the floor, you're not allowed to talk. So the floor is the hat. Our hat is yeah. the floor. Right? <laughs> but I do kind of agree with you, though, that I mean, I don't know. So many of our Congress people are just so patently absurd and everything. Yeah. That, like I can't decide if I think putting a powdered wig or a top hat on them would like make them easier to stomach it would certainly make the whole thing more ridiculous but like in a way yeah. that's like oh they're i'm not gonna worry about them look how silly they are or if it right. would be like you know <laughs> everything's on fire and they're wearing top hats you know what i mean yeah like, i don't know how i would feel about it i just think it like it maybe it takes them down a peg or two like when you have to put on the opera hat to talk you know, you're 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 gonna be in a, a a sillier mood, a better mood, maybe not as visceral. You know, and I just feel like if we had a little more whimsy, we should treat these people like the cartoons they are. Is what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, I could get. And with in that, Britain, they do for that. Sure. Yeah, they do do that. They do do that. And they I do, like do, it. Do, do, do I, that. I re like I I didn't know like how long ago was it that they was doing the wigs? Because it wasn't that long ago. I mean, I feel like I can remember when I was a kid yeah, seeing they like the modern wigs. day stuff of their people and they had wigs on. And also like, I think maybe in courts, like yeah, parliament's they one do. thing, but like in courts, like the judge who may have a different name, I'm not sure, a magistrate or something. Yeah, magistrate. The, mag the magistrate wears a wig and the lawyers who are called barristers may or may not wear wigs. I don't know. It's, uh, but it, it's got to be wild to get sentenced to life in prison by a dude wearing one of those wigs. You know what I, I mean? Was, I was about to say, imagine being an American and you're in London on a business trip and something happens and you get falsely accused of murder because you were at this hotel and then you show up to court and for the first time in your life, you meet your lawyer and he's wearing a wig and you're right. just like, oh my fucking God, I'm going to jail. But I, I yeah, think right. it's great. But then you get in there and the other lawyer and the judge are wearing wigs. You're like, oh man, thank God he came prepared. You know what I mean? Like, I would honestly, I'd feel pretty dumb and worried if he didn't have one. Didn't of wear a wig. On right now, I'd be yeah. like, dude, you didn't get the memo? You're supposed to have yeah. a wig on. Oh, I'm yeah. fucked. Motherfucker Nobody didn't wants bring to his see, wig. Nobody wants to see your goddamn regular hair. That would really hit for me if uh -huh. in my profession it was encouraged to wear a wig, which I guess it is in Hollywood. It is. Yeah, I was yeah. about to say, I mean, I think if you were a sketch improv guy, I yeah. think you'd probably be wearing all kinds of wigs. They seem I've, like they do a lot of wig stuff, you know? I've actually got Which the is. perfect, <laughs> yeah, I've actually got the perfect canvas for, like, Lauren Michaels, like, as far sure as my do. head goes. Now, I remember I, when I auditioned for uh, Saturday Night Live, my friend Leslie Jones, who was helping me with my audition, told me, she's like, you're going to need to shave your face and your mustache. Because Lauren needs to see that he can paint anything on you. And I just flat out refuse to do it and send in my audition anyways. And that's the only reason I'm not on Saturday Night Live. Absolutely the only reason. But, I mean, what, like, you you just, you're like, no, he neither take me with this beard or not. Because I've, I've heard that from other Saturday Night Live alums, too. Yeah. You're supposed, like you said, it's supposed to be like a canvas. And, dude, Chris you Rock with everything shaved, yeah. you literally look like one of them uh, wig heads. You know, I know. Right. <laughs> I know. A little bit rounder, a little bit, you know, got no, a little bit like, more going on in the cheek region. But I'm saying no better canvas than the V, yeah. which is what we call your head. And yet you refuse to, yeah. to share that with him and therefore the world. Yeah, well, because, you know, Chris Rock famously said, he's like, Lauren Michaels made him shave off his goatee because the quote was, in comedy, we put on beards, right. you know? Yeah. And no, I refused because I basically, I was like, I'm probably not going to get this show anyways, so I don't want to have to be ugly for four weeks and then not get the show, you know? So, like, fuck that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, all right. I mean, you want to get into it? Yeah, I'd love to get into it. Should we take a quick break or no? Is yeah, yeah. You know what? Let's let's throw to a break real quick. We'll be right back with more fancy stuff right after this. Y'all, the wait is over. Get quality steak, free shipping, period. The Backyard Butcher's restaurant quality steak boxes are available online. Get steakhouse quality bulk meat specials responsibly sourced from American Farms delivered right to your door. And right now for a limited time, Backyard's Butcher's is offering our listeners 15% off free shipping and four free ribeyes per life. 
for life, rather, with every subscription, BackyardButchers.com, promo code POA. Imagine, in, imagine open up a box of high-quality steak and being able to recreate the steakhouse experience right in your backyard at way less than grocery store prices, which y'all know are insane right now. That's exactly what you get from Backyard Butchers. I got sent a box of meat. There ain't nothing better in the world than a box of meat. I cooked up a ribeye the other night. My wife was absolutely raving about it. I didn't even tell her any different. I didn't tell her that I wasn't getting the store-bought stuff. I just made her this steak, and she was like, wait, 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 what's going on here? Did you like, and I was like, well, first off, baby, I sous vide it. You know how I do. But no, it's from Backyard Butchers, and it's way better. They also got ste- they got steak, pork, and chicken. They got a whole bunch of good stuff. And the best part is, again, you beat the inflationary pricing at the grocery store. You cut out the middleman. Backyard Butchers is fresh, safely packaged, all that good stuff. Look. You don't even have to have a membership or subscription, by the way. But if you do choose to subscribe, you can cancel any time. But try them once, and I promise you, you're going to want to subscribe because you're going to want to reorder because this stuff is absolutely phenomenal. So go to BackyardButchers.com, get 15% off using that promo code POA and four free ribeyes per life, for life, with every subscription. Thank You'll thank me later. I promise you. Why not? You're getting free stuff. You're getting a good deal. Why wait? All right, backyardbutchers.com, promo code POA for 15% off and four free ribeyes. Just just do it and stay fancy. Phenomenal. Say goodbye to that grocery store. And hello to Bulk Meat Specials, baby. Skew. All right, so let's talk about it. Uh, I want to talk about inheriting stuff. Here's why it's on my mind. Uh, and I've mentioned this in other uh, Skew Universe projects recently and whatnot. But uh, so... Over the Christmas break, I had to go to Tennessee. I mean, I was going to go anyway just for the holidays, but I had to spend a lot of time in Salina, my hometown, because my dad passed away 10 years ago. His house, the house we grew up in. Oh, I'm so sorry. His mama. Oh, it's okay, Chuck. You didn't know. I never told you that. No, that's something something about you that you literally never talk about. Uh, No one would ever know. Yeah. No. (laughs) Uh, His mom, my mama, continued to live in that house after he died. This year, she uh, was diagnosed with dementia and had to go into a nursing home because there's no one, uh, no one in my family who has the capacity to care full time for somebody with dementia. So uh, that means oh, the Lord, house is. Let, let me tell you something, brother. As someone who went through it with their grandma, it about ain't nobody that has the capacity to do that shit. It is right. in. It is insanely tough. So yeah. uh, you know, uh, I I feel for him, dude. It is rough shit. Not to be a downer, yeah. but it's rough. So I had to go up there and uh, clean the house out because we're going to have to do something with it. Me and my sister, right? You know, sell it, rent it, whatever. Which we don't means know you. Yet, but, right. Well, so on that note, and I don't know if Paige listens to POA, <laughs> but I'm just going to say this is what happened. So each day, every day, you know, I had a limited amount of time. I mean, I was there for like over a week, but still, you know, I had a deadline. Like I got to, I'm going back to California on this day. And uh, every day we would quit at about 4.30 or 5 because that's when the sun went down. And we didn't right. have like a lot of floodlights set up or nothing like that. So we get started in the morning. When I say we, I mean me, Katie, and <laughs> the man himself, Thompson. Dustin Thompson. Yeah, yeah, Thompson. Thompson was there pretty much the whole time and helped me out tremendously. But uh, his mama also helped. Uncle Tim helped a little bit. And Paige did help. But we're quitting at 4.35 every day. So every day, Paige roll in about two thirty, three o'clock, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then sit down and start looking through pictures and stuff for about an hour, and then uh, and then tell me to carry something to her car and then leave and go back to Cookville. You know I mean? would like to say like, this real quick to Big Papa producer, Dad. You don't have to respond to this, but just so you have a clear picture of who who Trey's sister Paige is, uh, it's Kirby. So that's all I'll say. Yes, which is that's Corey's sister. Everybody. Yeah. We've always thought that our sisters are uh, pretty similar. Uh, so, yeah, but, you know, whatever it is, what it is. Um, but my, my point is, going through that whole process, it's like you start thinking about, man, it is insane the amount of shit that people accumulate mm-hmm. in a lifetime, yeah. you know? And then when they die, like, it's their descendants got a disposition. All, all, they got to deal with all that. You know what I mean? And, like... I'm not saying that's a reason to not keep shit. I'm just saying it's like a part of life or whatever, but it's wild the amount of shit that builds up and how much, at least in my case, 
is stuff that you do not need. But what I'm getting right. at is I was thinking while going through it, cause like we never had any money really. So like all our furniture and stuff like that was from the early nineties to begin with and wasn't expensive at, you know, in the beginning. Right. So it was like, it was all just stuff that we just trashed. We got a dumpster and throw it out. Like nobody wanted it. It wasn't like Goodwill type shit. And that's how almost everything went. Not even right? good enough for Goodwill. God damn. I mean, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't, to me, it's like, you can go to Goodwill and get something nicer than what this is. Yeah. Right. Cause it's old as shit. And Mayma had some like antique type stuff that did not get thrown away. That got taken either by Paige or other people Katie. close to the family or whatever. Now, Katie didn't want none of it, thankfully. I mean, oh, we, me and her now, couldn't get any of it back. You know, I just like, figured that she would, now here's what I figured Katie would do, knowing your wife. She wouldn't have tried to get it back. She would have taken a picture of it immediately and tried to flip it on Facebook market before she got home. Yeah, and she would have been down for all that. It's just in Salina, it's pretty different than in <laughs> another place. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it is fake. There, you could get on Facebook and post something like that, but who knows what's going to be turning? Actually, I know trash going to be turning up at your house. <laughs> ask you know, just poke around, whatever. It is what it is. But if we'd been in her hometown, she would have done all that. But like so, the things I either kept or put away somewhere else to be kept in the future was like you know, a bunch of guns. Right. Obviously, family pictures, yearbooks, stuff like that. I when my dad died, I'd already picked through all of his record collection, taking all the records I wanted. Paige took the rest of them this time. Uh, stuff like that. But, you know, in the meantime, the that, you, that you uh, didn't want and Paige got. Oh, dude, I because I had already went through them and picked out what I wanted when he died. Yeah. I didn't even look at the ones that were left over that she took right. this time around because I'd already gone through that process. So I felt like I didn't need to. Right. So really, I couldn't even tell you stuff that I would say I I wasn't that familiar with or whatever. Like I took and also he had multiple copies of some albums. So like, you know, I took like all the Bowie and. Beatles, yeah. the boss, and Bowie. I Bowie, took all yeah. of them. I took all the Skinner albums. I told y'all in a recent episode, like, I've got the copy of Street Survivors with the explosion behind mm -hmm. them in the background, which they changed after they all died in a makes fire them, explosion. Makes them up, or most of them died in a fire explosion. Yeah. So, yeah. But it was like stuff like that, but everything else got thrown away. And the stuff that, you know, is getting thrown away is just like so laughably worthless. <laughs> you know what I mean? So much of it. A bunch of rebel like, flag why? shit. What, well, buddy? Oh my God! <laughs> the sheer number of rebel flags and and rebel flag, uh, you know, accoutrement, accoutrement, yeah, <laughs> accoutrement, yeah, with rebel no, flags on them somewhere. No, no sentence has better described this podcast than yeah. rebel flag, rebel flag accoutrement. accoutrement. <laughs> yeah, and look, here's the deal. Okay, since we've brought it up, let me just go ahead and uh, you know get into all that. I've also talked about this extensively since I've, you know, been in this game professionally anyway. This ain't a secret. I've always said it like here's when I was when I was younger, I fucked with the rebel flag. I did. I also loved hip hop and was not in any way racist when when I first got a little older because my dad loved the rebel flag and also raised me not to be racist. So like initially early in my adulthood, I would get defensive about it. I would be like, no, I know plenty of people. Cause I did know plenty of people right. who were like who it's not at all a racist thing, but I don't even think I made it to 25 before I realized like, yeah, well that kind of don't matter. That's not it, even it, really it, the point. Right. What matters yeah. is what it represents to most everybody else. And so, right. you know, I put the rebel flag behind me a good long while it's, ago, but going through the house I grew up in, Lord of mercy, dude. I mean, matter of fact, go ahead. Say what you're going to say. Let me well, I was going to a couple of choice items here. I was going to say, it's like at a certain point you have to go, even if the rebel flag doesn't mean genuinely doesn't mean racist things to you, you have to get to a point where you realize that it does for so many people. And then you have to go, do I want to seem like a racist? Like, am I, exactly, do, I right. do I love this thing so much? Is this thing so important to me that I don't mind if other people from a distance think that I'm a racist person and it, it's not worth it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Cause like, dude, dude, the right. general Lee is bad fucking ass. There's a lot of right. Skinner albums that are bad fucking ass, but like, it's not worth it to me to make my friend Daryl uncomfortable. You know exactly. what I mean? Right. Yeah, that's exactly the conclusion I ultimately arrived at, too. Again, years ago, y'all. Yeah. But when I was younger, five yeah, years. So like, this was something 
Uh, this was an item here. Uh, if you can, so it says American <laughs> by birth, rebel by choice. Yeah, by uh, God. And then I know that that was a common saying back then. It was it on was. a lot of airbrush t-shirts. And on the airbrush, oftentimes it would be accompanied by American by birth, rebel by choice, Southern by the grace, grace of God. Grace of God. Was yep. the ending to that saying uh, a lot of times. So I had a bit on our album about this poster and the whole point of the bit was how insanely stupid it is how stupid it is to have something that has the rebel flag and the american flag because you might have not noticed that the skull there his bandana yeah. is the yeah. american flag and the whole point <laughs> yeah. of the bit was about how that's so dumb and contradictory and hypocritical and makes no sense i mean i was making fun of it but here's another one i found this is a good quality item here that is a uh, confederate <laughs> alien smoking a cigarette or perhaps a joint no that's a cigarette for sure yeah yeah so uh yeah Who that's a piece it? of county fair art if you guys aren't familiar with that uh that genre or field of artwork uh county also, fair art i had a bunch <laughs> of it a whole bunch of it also if you're familiar with the extended ski universe that is actually a self-portrait of dj lewis yeah <laughs> yeah boy uh, so here's a couple other pieces to show you, like what I was working with. These aren't the rebel flag ones, but this is what I'm saying. We've got, you got Penny Hardaway, Mace, yeah. Wolf, NWO Wolf Pack, the red NWO, of course. and Goldberg. And for the record, I had a bunch of Stone Cold stuff too. I don't know yeah. if I just didn't really pick up on this at the time or whatever, because I definitely love Stone Cold also. But that Goldberg picture says Goldberg 632, twice the man. Because, you know, right. Austin did 316 or whatever. Um, Hell of a Jew, that guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's another that, That's another story I've told a whole bunch of times regarding <laughs> Goldberg being a Jew. Um, well, now I feel like I have to tell it <laughs> for anybody that hasn't heard. I can't just say <laughs> that. And Otherwise, people are going to think, oh, is that why yeah. you stopped liking him? Right. Yeah, it did kind of <laughs> sound that way, didn't it? Uh, so I'll do that here in a minute. But the last one, this picture I found. Uh, this actually inspired a Rolling Stone article that I wrote. It's a picture of my dad yep. kissing my grandson, and you can see the rebel flag in the background. I'm very proud of how you slipped that. I wrote a Rolling yeah. Stone article well, in there you know, organic. No, to. I'm proud of you for I like, dude, I would have yeah. been more brazen about it. I would have been like, I don't know if y'all know, but your boy mm. wrote and where you just said it in a normal sentence. Yeah. So, all right, since I brought it up, and we haven't even got to what, like it's okay. the, the rich people part of this or whatever. But again, hey. I've told this story on our other shows and stuff, but basically I had a girlfriend in high school. She wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed, you know, had other things going for her though. And, uh, <laughs> and I was at her house one night and her white, her redneck step, stepdad, me and him were talking about wrestling as you are wont to do. And I was talking about how Goldberg hit for me when we left to drive into town, me and me and my girlfriend, uh, I was still talking about oh, Goldberg, no, you know, because yeah. <laughs> that already hits for me. You can't it did not. hit for me then. And I was like, and I was like, you know, and one of the things that I love about Goldberg, one of the things I think is so cool is like, I love anybody that like defies stereotypes, you know, or breaks stereotypes. And like, you know, he's Jewish and like, you don't see a lot of big, badass Jewish guys. Like you don't think about that when like all the stereotypes about Jewish people are not that. And I think that's cool. And she like looked at me like I was the dumbest person on earth. She was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, Bill Goldberg. I was like, he's, he's Jewish. And like, like it was the dumbest thing she'd ever heard. Like she felt sorry for me that I didn't know this. She was like, she was like, what? It's like, Trey, there are no more Jews. And I was like, <laughs> what? She goes, yeah, Hitler killed all the Jews, Trey. <laughs> you didn't know that? And he like, did it. Uh, yeah, it's like, I guess she thought he pulled it off, but right. uh, yeah, somebody, uh, I told this story once and somebody was like, <laughs> and I'm just kidding, but someone asked me, uh, a, a girl we were hanging out with, I told that story, I was like, oh my God, did you break up with her right then? I was like, shit, my dick grew three sizes that day. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you know, she can lay it down. Yeah, right. You exactly. know what I mean? Dude, yeah. when a girl says some racist stuff, you're just like, I'm getting in that. Well, back I don't door. think that was racist. That was just yeah, insanely just stupid. ignorant. Like yeah. she genuinely believed it. It's not like she was celebrating. Yeah, she wasn't right, saying right, like, right. and thank God for that. Like yeah, that's actually, not what she was right. saying. It, what she I should have said. No. 
Yeah, what I should have said was when you're with a girl that dumb, you know that she can lay it down. That's what I right. meant. Yeah. But uh all right. So anyway, I'm I'm going through all this shit, all these memories, all these Confederate flags, all this stuff. And uh it got me to thinking like about what this process must be like for rich people. You know what I mean? Cause it's like shit of actual value. Yeah. You right. You know what I mean? But of course the other thing is like fighting. When you're, did you say fighting? The, yeah. Cause then like yeah. you and Paige right. aren't fighting over some old her no. badcock fucking coffee table. But if it's a Picasso, Exactly. People fight over it, but also ideally the person who dies leaves a an actual will, which of course my dad didn't have. But really the the house is the only real asset. Me and Pedro just, you know, 50-50 on that. But yeah, it leads to a lot of shit. Red, People fight red, a lot. Rednecks and, don't uh, leave a will, they leave a bill. Yeah, right. Yes. I mean, that's if y'all been on uh if y'all been airheads for a minute, you remember the story about me almost having to pay my own child support. That's from when my dad died. I uh, inherited the bill. You're right. That's exactly yeah. what happened. But uh, so I got to thinking about it and thinking like, obviously having all the money. I was just thinking purely about the, because it felt like such a pain in the ass to do this, you know? Of course. And I just kept thinking about like, yeah, you make all this money off the shit you sell or whatever you do with it. But like, if I kept thinking like, if this stuff was like worth something, the sheer amount of additional time and logistics that would go into fucking with this would be insane. You know what I mean? Like you well, got to find somewhere to put it. You got to go through the process of selling it or whatever. And part of me was almost kind of grateful that the vast majority of that stuff was like just patently worthless. Cause it yeah, made the whole thing simple for me. But, but if you're rich, you probably got a some bitch that do that for you. You know what I mean? And yeah, you you're know, probably right. And you know that you're going to get screwed because they're going to like steal something, but at least you don't have to do anything. Like for me, let's say I wasn't wealthy and I couldn't afford to buy, you know, pay somebody to do all this stuff. But like if I had a grandmother that was super rich and she died, I would just holler at one of my boys and be like, yo, if you handle all this shit, 50 50 cuz, cuz I don't want to do that shit. You know what I mean? But right. yeah, but again, like to go back to your point, like even though they could hire someone to do it, there still is going to be that like br brothers and sisters in these situations have like become estranged. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because they're like, no, no, no. Dad would have wanted me to have it, you know, or no, he, he wasn't in his right mind when he signed that wheel or like, well, he didn't say anything about this. That's fucking mine. And like in that regard, that's too much. Yeah, for sure. So I wanted to, so then I looked up like, you know, what are some of the weirdest or funniest or most unusual things that people have inherited, right? And I found a few uh, good options for us to share on the show, I thought. So first of all, a set of 250,000 ancient arrowheads. Okay. Um, yeah. And it was such a hidden collection that John Wayne tried to buy it from the couple that inherited it and they refused. And what they did was they gave it to a dude with a roadside museum in exchange for, he said he'd give them a dollar from every ticket that was sold. And they ended up making $400,000 as of the writing of this article anyway, off so, of uh, loaning those arrowheads out. So Indian stuff hit for him. I know, right? That's what I thought. It was like, <laughs> what, like what was he going to do? Just scream at, like, just like dunk yeah. on it or something, walk by yeah. and be like, yeah, what? That's what you get, motherfuckers. Yeah. Well, it's hit harder. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is yes, why you're I dead. Also thought it was ironic that, yeah, Indian stuff hit for him. But again, it's like a, in a trophy case way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. I guess. Yeah. I'm assuming. Because he famously, you know, hated Indians. Indians. <laughs> oh, my yeah, right. God, dude. <laughs> you know, I, like it, it's like. When I think of John Wayne, my dad is losing his mind right now, by the way. Mm -hmm. When I think of John yeah, Wayne, <laughs> the first thing I think of is, she way he hated Indians. Absolutely. Yeah, he tried to whip that Indian's ass at the Oscars that year. A lady. Had to hold him back. The lady. A Indian lady. lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know of a word for that, but I'm pretty sure it ain't cool, so you I can't, guess I won't say it. Yeah, yeah okay. you can't. <laughs> no, no, you can't say that but as far as as far as indian goes though uh because native americans episode, first off see, but, okay I'm but sorry look, here's the deal 
I like. I don't think that one is that simple, right? It's and not because some here's some Native anecdotal. Americans are like, no Indians, right? Fine. But they not all of them, and I get that. But of just course. one anecdotal example: a, few, a couple months ago, as part of my tour, I did a show uh, on a for reservation. Like a, not on a reservation, but it was set up by the Cherokee Nation. If it was how like, the fuck, uh, dude, how the fuck are you just now telling me this? This is the type of shit that makes me question our friendship. If I did a goddamn show that was set up by the Cherokee Nation, I would have called you that day and been like, you ain't gonna believe this shit. Well, what it was was like a fundraiser dinner for like Oklahoma Democrats, but it was set up by the right. Cherokee nation. And also, so I met the former chief and the current chief of the T Cherokee nation, the former chief, like drove me around everywhere and all that stuff. I talked to him a lot and they all like, I never heard native or native American. Like it was only Indians. When right. And them talking about themselves, they self-referred as Indians and, you know, talking about the tribe and all that. They only use the word Indians. So right. like, I, you know, and I know, it, it, but I know there's other tribes that it sure. ain't like that, but I'm saying with that one, it's it ain't not completely like cut and word. dry. Yeah, exactly. Right. right. Yeah. Like, so it just depends. So all the times we'd be saying Indian, pretend it's okay. Cause it's one of them, one of the tribes <laughs> that's cool with it. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so, uh, all right. So, um, yeah, I got a lot of like cool Cherokee Nation swag and stuff, like a hat and shirt and stuff like that. But nice. it's cool, but I feel like if I wear it, people are gonna yes. think that I'm saying I'm in the I'm gonna be one of those white dudes It's like, you know, I'm one sixteen yep. Cherokee or whatever, when it that would not be my yeah. intent. So it's right. But it is but, cool shit though. But I mean you could use it as a conversation starter with somebody some little fucking blue haired bitch from los angeles tells you you can't wear that it'd be like i got this from the goddamn chief chief you know what i mean the cherokee nation he, yeah, that they good. they they invited me to the corn barbecue you know what let I me mean? tell you something else about them buddy and i mean you can find this on the internet so i ain't telling tales out of school they own hard rock now yeah and uh and like they're hitting the cherokee nation uh or at least i, I like smoked the opium with them one time is. <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah i'm not i'm not saying that they're not they don't have still struggles and shit like that i'm just saying like he oh showed no me, these guys weren't struggling at all they were hitting and doing opium yeah he showed me like their new sort of like facilities and shit they've recently gotten all that stuff and it's all yeah. you know it's all uh yeah i watched sweet. yellowstone yeah. anyway yeah well i just started yellowstone so i'll see how a whole that bunch goes. of indian stuff yeah uh yeah. all right Another uh, another dude named Lloyd Boyd, which <laughs> what a dick and his parents are. Right? Do you think does anything about that scream fancy to you or no? No, that no, seems me like, neither. Seems I red, mean, that, right? That, dude, I was about to say like, if my sister came home and told me she's like, I was down at the bait shop and I ran into Lloyd Boyd, that would make so much more sense than I was at the I was at a Sotheby's right. auction and talked to my friend Lloyd Boyd. Yeah, well, apparently it's the latter with this guy because this guy inherited 40 grand pianos, many of Ooh, which are worth $50,000 on their own. It's like, yeah. where do you have to, you have to own a warehouse to keep yep. fucking you know, 40 grand pianos? That shit is wild. Um, yeah, grand pianos are expensive as fuck, boy. It's, uh, it's like a one way that like, you know, pian pianos are like nice pianos are elitist, buddy. They're super elitist. Yeah. So then there's this guy, Richard Levine. He inherited more than 13,000 clown-related knickknacks <laughs> from his father-in-law. Okay? <laughs> Not his father. His father-in-law. Which like to me prank. sounds like it's a bit. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, exactly. I'm going to give my son-in-law this clown shit to represent yeah, who he is. But evidently that's not the case the dude greatly cared for his clown collection and now this guy's like he says he doesn't know what to do with it but uh but apparently his father-in-law his name was jack and he went by clown jackie uh <laughs> he spent over 50 years amassing this clown collection thirteen thousand items would you like to guess from what u.s state this family hails okay clown stuff okay can you give me a region Southeast. <laughs> Alabama? No, further down, further to the east. To southeast as you can go. F fucking Florida. Florida. Yeah. yeah. So that, the headline is like, that Florida man sense. inherits clown paraphernalia. <laughs> yeah. 
And Dude, don't did. they wear clown stuff to the Jacksonville Jaguars games? I mean, they did that last year as a sign of protest for how terrible the team was, and then they beat <laughs> the Colts and knocked them out of the playoffs while dressed as clowns, which is one of the hittingest things I've ever yeah. seen in the I know, history I don't, of the AFC South. I don't like to give um, Jags a lot of props, but they have yeah. been hitting for me lately in all of yeah. those departments. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the uh, 13,000 pieces of clown paraphernalia that he has grown to love, reportedly. Of um, course. Yeah, naturally. My first performance was as a clown. What? Like a literal clown? Like with clown makeup on and shit? Yeah, I got still got a picture of it. I was when? five. Where? I was five. Oh, I played, five. Oh, yeah. okay, all right. And we had, a cir- we had our elementary school, we had a circus that the kids performed in, and I dressed up as a clown. And you know, that remember those little plastic cars that you drive with your feet like Fred Flintstone? I yeah, just sort of red went, and yellow jobs. That one, at the yeah. yeah, little tykes or whatever. I just kind of yeah. went around the stage hitting in that. Well, that does it. Yeah, it does it. A harbinger of things to come as well. <laughs> um, yeah, no shit. All right. And then a lot of these like gold coins and stuff. An eight year old inherited a ty- an entire winery, but his uh, aunt helped him run it until he got older. Yada yada. So this guy. There was this dude who moved here from like Italy way back in the day in like the early 1900s and just he moved to California, got screwed on some land. He was going to buy some land to farm, but it was nothing but hard pan, which is unfarmable. So he just started digging into it Mm -hmm. and he ended up digging out all these elaborate tunnels and rooms and spaces to the point where he has like uh gardens and ballrooms and shit all dug under the ground oh that's right? badass in uh up in the northern part of California and somebody inherited that system of catacombs and tunnels under the ground actually a few people inherited it some of them sold it off to developers who of course just turned it, it into up condos. and turned it yeah. into condos exactly they just bulldozed through it and then turned it into condos or whatever but this, some of his descendants though this one couple they said they wanted to honor his memory because he spent so much time and effort on this and i think it's really cool right. uh and they leased it to a like another real estate company or something to that effect uh for that company to like find a good use for it or whatever right. uh, without without destroying it right and so what that company did when their whole thing was honoring this guy's memory was they basically put a sign on the road pointing to where it was with the <laughs> with the words come and see the secret world of the freakish human mole <laughs> That's fucking great. Uh, deranged spelunker lived underground for fifty <laughs> plus years. No light, no family. Right, you know, like see where he toiled and subterranean obscurity. The, you know, for five dollars a piece yeah. or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like the, yeah, the penguin, but with dirt. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think that That's if you so ever, funny to me, dude? <laughs> that they like right. they had the best of intentions. They thought these people, they're yeah. business people, they know what to do. And then you're like driving down the street, you see that sign one day or whatever. It's like it's hilarious. Come <laughs> see this fucking terrified loser. Right. Yeah. Do you think that if you hit hard enough, you would get an underground panic room? Because I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I haven't been thinking about it a lot, but I'll be honest. I've been thinking about it more than I ever had or ever thought that I would before. (laughs) Right. I keep thinking about it. I'm like, dude. I'm not. I'm not fully at panic room level, but I've been thinking like, dude, you need to be at least a little bit prepared. Come on. Like you get you need to take some steps. Yeah. Right. Like I I could. A panic room would hit. I can't, it would hit, I can't afford right now the, I can't afford to build an underground panic room, but I could afford to go ahead and stock up on non-perishables for like three yeah, right. years and exactly. then hopefully, and then hopefully get panic room money in the next couple of years. And like, dude, you know me, if I had all that, there's a possibility that even if shit wasn't going wrong, I'd just go down there and stay for like three years. I might do yeah. it. I, it really comes across me wearing all this shit saying this. But mm-hmm. yeah. anyways, go ahead, Trey. I'm sorry to interrupt you with my lunacy. That's all right. So we got another one. 200 reptiles. That's a hell of a thing to inherit. <laughs> yeah. uh, weirdly, 
not in Florida. This person was oh, actually really? in Canada, I reckon, which I don't, I didn't know. Damn, they, they got reptiles with, up uh, there. I had no idea they had reptiles up there. Um, they like to hot though. Yeah, right. Reptiles like to hot and, uh, it ain't hot. Uh, Not let me look cold. this up. It is cold. Yeah. The opposite of hot, but this dude, he was a Czechoslovakian an immigrant from the Czech Republic, right. Who amassed this collection of reptiles and he used to show them off. He had his own, you know, reptile store, not a store, a zoo. You know, I, you know, you'd be driving yep. through usually Florida or something like that. And there's just like, come here, fucking snakes. shady. Ass. Yeah. I'm over here. Yeah. With snakes. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> I got a goddamn Komodo dragon, man, man. Go on down, yeah. look at that. Put a zip on Five dollars, you can look at it. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> I'll shove some paint yeah. thinner in his mouth, make him cough out a flame on this zippo, baby. You. But yeah, it's in Indian River, Ontario, which is the they don't call them states. What do they call them? Provinces. The provinces. In Canada. Yeah. yeah. I knew it. I fucking you did. knew you got it. it. Yeah. Provinces. That's the province where Toronto is. So in the, so in Ontario, in rural, I'm assuming Ontario, he had the Serpentarium. We, we went to and Toronto, he, correct? No, no, we didn't. Well, we, we went, only went to we only Van, went to the western part of Canada, Vancouver, we went, in Vancouver, Vancouver Edmonton, a, and Calgary. A Chinese woman called me a cowboy in Vancouver, mm-hmm. and I've never forgot it, and I've always loved the whole country because of it think she was a canadian woman but yeah i know what you mean uh she was chinese <laughs> she was she chinese was, canadian right yeah chinese canadian but well no i don't want i can't do the voice but thought, she was chinese I thought her voice was just like oh that cowboy gave me a i, I remembered her talking no, like a, and a like a, a young woman like a young as though chinese women aren't young women well like a, like a Canadian fucking, that's how well, I remembered then it I head, remembered it I, racist because in my <laughs> brain <laughs> In my brain, it was insert a Chinese woman saying, "Oh, cowboy, cowboy got a cigarette." Got <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. Okay. Well, we I guess we ought to move on from that. But anyway, this uh, reptile feller, he had a common law spouse, you know, which that's a nebulous legal situation. He had this woman he'd been with for twenty seven years. Then they separated right before an, a year before he died. And his only other family was an estranged brother still in the Czech Republic. So it's those two people as to who inherits these reptiles. And I don't know if they had like a cage match to see who didn't have to take them or what, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like that's how I would feel. I'd be like, no, yeah. I, no, honestly, I, don't I insist. Want the, you, you have please, no, please. He would want you to have him. And the brother's like, I yeah. have not seen them in 50 years. Like he would still <laughs> want you to have them. Believe me, I know what was in his heart. I yeah. fucking want 200 goddamn lizards. The fuck am I no. going to do with that? Uh, I mean, but set I them free is up. what I'd do. Well, you can't just set fucking lizards free in Canada. at all. bet. Fuck. <laughs> well, you ought not. Yeah, That's how right. you burn well, ecosystems, know. The, Joe. They could be invasive. You think, you think 200 lizards is going to fuck up the ecosystem or they're Absolutely. just all going to get... No, well, they'll but, probably all die because it's cold. But, I was about to say, like, or they're going to get eaten by a hawk day one and everything's fine possibly but you know apparently there's like i think there's hippos somewhere in colombia now because pablo escobar had a couple of hippos just to hit with and yeah, now yeah. they have hippos down there whatever and maybe them hippos ain't fucking nothing up but all i'm saying is like invasive species you know don't what? take many to really fuck you shut up you've you've taught me a lot about myself just in the past 45 seconds it would never have crossed my mind that if someone gave me 200 lizards and I just set them free, that I would fuck up an ecosystem. And I don't know that that's selfish of me because here's the deal. Now that you've said, hey, Corey, that would fuck up the ecosystem, I wouldn't do it. It just shows how stupid I am that if you hadn't have told me that, I would have totally done that. Yeah, I don't think it's selfish at all that you, you know, it's been like, oh, animals deserve to be free. So it's coming from a good place. But yeah, it right. would not be a good idea, though. Um, go all right. I want to go through these last ones a little bit quickly because I'm, uh, you know, I'm eating up a lot of time here, though they do hit. So the, a scientist left 7,000 bones to an heir <laughs> once. He called it his bone palace. Uh, <laughs> oh, such I, rare- I got one of them. That's with the back of my ex Terra. <laughs> <laughs> such rarities <laughs> as an elephant femur and many different animal skulls. The guy who inherited them eventually donated them Bro. to science because what the fuck else are you going to do with a shitload of bones? Well, an elephant femur literally would barely fit in the room I'm in. 
Right. Yeah, that's a big ass bone. Ain't nobody got space for that. No. That's what I'm saying. Is like I'm looking Hell at no. like my grandpa's guns, and I'm like, I don't know where I'm gonna put yeah, right. these guns, let alone an elephant leg. You know what I mean? In like, your panic fucking, run. Uh, right. Yeah. Would hit. Um, okay. So anyway, and then just a couple more. Let's see. Uh, I, about four dollars and fifty cents. That's what something that was uh, passed down <laughs> in a wheel. Once. It actually was. It was one fifty each. Well, so here's what the specific thing was. This rich old lady who was pissed at like a couple of her kids or grandkids, three of them, three yeah. of three of her heirs. Right? She was pissed at. And, uh, so she put them in her will and the specific wording of it was something to the effect of 30 pieces of silver of the lowest possible denomination <laughs> as befits such a Judas. <laughs> I was about to say, I was about to yeah. say that's the amount that Judas got. That, and that's why she did it. That's and hilarious. It, in, in the lowest denomination or currency that you could get pieces of silver in, it ended up being about a dollar fifty American for each of them. So Amazing. yeah, they inherited a dollar fifty. Um, no, one, all right. There was this rich playboy in Portugal who just fucked around and hit his whole life and then died, which was cool. You know, yeah, he had no uh, family or heirs or nothing like that, but he had a bunch of money. And what he did was he sat down with a phone book one day and flipped <laughs> oh, through it. Nice. And Lost. flip to a page, close his eyes, point, that person gets a Bugatti, right? Flip through it, close his eyes, <laughs> point, that person gets $100,000, right? Flip was it really it, a point, Bugatti or you just hitting? This gets a shark. I mean, I was just hitting, yeah. but it's, uh, it was, I mean, it was stuff nope. like that. It was, Bugatti, there was cars. Yeah. Well, I just, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you and let everybody know how in, in sync with comedy rhythm you are. Bugatti is the funniest uh, expensive car. thing right. you can give to somebody. It's got all the yeah. Bugatti. That was great, and I think you're doing a good job. Oh, well, I appreciate that. That's very sweet of you to say, but yeah. And it's like, when I read this, I was like, hey, that's undeniably baller. No it doubt about baller. that, right? That's absolutely baller. It's also cool, but it's like, you know, what if them do, like, one of them could have been a pederast. Rapist. You know what I mean? Yeah, and right. now, you know, and now... Now he's got a winery, a vineyard or whatever, and it's like that sort of yeah. don't hit. Uh but you no, know, I like guess. he should have he should have done more work and been like find some actual poor people, but like you can't fault the guy for giving it all away. Yeah. I mean, I think it's cool. I think he could have followed the exact same process, but then had like a PI vet the whole list when he came up with it. Yes, and if anybody's exactly. a huge piece of shit or a billionaire, cross him off and do it again, you know. I agree. And that way you could maintain the integrity of the the plan. You know, right. Um, uh, this one's going to hit for you, child. There was this rich dude once who died and left a trust uh, with the specific instructions that the trust be used to build a library. Okay. Library. Oh, okay. Whatever. With his name. This library, this library uh, was going to be called the womanless library. <laughs> and. <laughs> And it was to be stipulated explicitly that no women were ever to be allowed on the premises of this library at any point in time. Elsewise, yeah. it shall be summarily destroyed. Yeah, Dude. because he women did not have for him. And he I guess books did, books did, women didn't. He was like, I know how to combine that real quick. Could you would he no would he have Agatha Christie in would he have Agatha Christie in the library? That's a good question. Women? They didn't. Well, because here's it, it never ended up happening, you know, because like, of course, it didn't really. This is like the modern era we're living in. So, like, I don't know how. I mean, someone would have to execute that vision. You know what I mean? And I guess people weren't too enthusiastic about doing that or whatever. But it, yeah, it, that never ended up happening. So basically, that money's just sitting there and not, not shit's happening with Let it. Me, but so I don't know. That's a good question, though. Like, would Agatha you, Christie's books be in there? I don't know. You have made me a more pragmatic person over the years because you're one of the most pragmatic and intelligent people I know that looks at things from every side to get the logic of like, hey, listen, that might not be right, but it is best. And um, I think that that's actually a great way to get men who otherwise wouldn't read 
to read. <laughs> like if okay, you had a library, you. Yeah. if you had a library where they're like, we got Hooters catered every day and no bitches are allowed here. Mm -hmm. There'd be some dudes be like, who's this Dostoevsky motherfucker? I'd like yeah. to get in on yeah. that. You know, I knew books hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Now that you put it that way, they should have built it. Now I'm on board I with know. it. I know. It might, might have educated the service. masses a little bit. Yeah, it would be. Also yeah. keeps them out of bars or, you know, it keeps them. There's no, if you're in a place that doesn't allow women, you're not able to slap a woman. You know what I mean? So like right. that, that the, you keep them out the of time women of, slapping range. Right. Yes. Isolate the them there. Of, the type of men who don't want to be around women shouldn't be around women. So keep them right. in places that women aren't allowed. That is a brilliant idea. It's funny because it's kind of like those ideas that get uh, pitched every now and then. They did it on a season of The Wire where it's like, let's make a part of town where it's totally legal. Do whatever drugs that you season want. Was that, crazy. Way keep, <laughs> that way it keeps all the drug out. Well, I've heard people like pitch yeah. that shit. Like it's getting no, brought know. up in real life before. And it's like that way we keep all the drug addicts in one place. It's kind of like that, but with, you know, women hating dipshits, except, yeah. and I know this is part of your whole point, it being a library is a it little don't tough. Make any I know sense. your whole yeah. point is like, oh, that'll get them to read, but it's like, you know, what are the they vent, If yeah. they're reading Mein Kampf or something, that still don't yeah. hit. Yeah, but, yeah right. <laughs> But yeah, if it was like a fucking, uh, I don't know, a Harley dealership or something, right. uh, then, you know, right. they would congregate there, I'm sure. Right. But I don't know about a library. Okay, two more just real quick. One, William Shakespeare, you might know this. Uh, I didn't. When he died, his will only mentioned his wife, Anne Hathaway, one time. Yep. They had yep. children. Uh, he left their children most of the stuff, but he left Anne Hathaway only one item. It explicitly was listed as his second best bed. Yeah. Uh, so not even as hitting this bed, but apparently, so for a long time, this was seen as a great slight toward Anne Hathaway, but apparently now some Shakespearean scholars are making the case that it actually wasn't. And it was uh, some kind of lost in translation. Not exactly. Cause it was a form yeah. of English, but there's something we're missing with context of the time that makes it not a dick move. So that part's kind of up for debate, but he left Anne Hathaway only his second best bed. I did rem I do I did know that fact. I don't know if I brought it up on my Shakespeare episode, but I did I did know that fact. I don't I don't know uh it, whether it was a slide or not, but yeah, I'd heard that and that's pretty funny. All right, last one. This dude, this rich Manhattan motherfucker had three daughters, left them millions of dollars, but with a shitload of stipulations. The stipulations were you can only have this money when you're thirty five years old and only if you have graduated from college with a whatever plus GPA married a man who hits i don't know if in the small <laughs> i don't know if in the small print it was like no jews no but you know what i mean yeah, i don't know right. i don't know how explicit he got with what hits means obviously didn't know it, but it basketball did yeah right you gotta have a, get married a man had a couple kids whatever and i think it was like i might be making this up but it was like stayed under uh, stayed under at 160 pounds you know, or whatever. Yeah, it was right. like it was just all these like stipulations like you better be a fucking Good woman, worth having and worth being around when you're 35, or you don't get none of this money. And if you, but if you are, you get a hundred million dollars or whatever. And I, like, it's a I think it's, asshole kind of move. But fair. I'm kind of like, I think it's fair too. Yeah, it's basically it's like, just again, you don't have to dictate who someone marries and all that type of shit. But just sort of as a parent, I kind of understand having a carrot uh, to incentivize I, yes. them. Yes, hey, have your shit together. Yes, right? it's because you it's, can't coast on our I, money like you think a, you can. And I mean, I kind of get that. Yeah, it's a way to parent from the grave. You know right. what I mean? Like, I'm not going to be here to coach you through all this stuff, but I can be like, everyone wants a hundred million dollars. So do all this shit. And if you do all this shit, you'll be a good person. And therefore, you've earned the money. And if you don't, guess what? You don't fucking deserve it. Dude, somebody, if, if, like, I was a piece of shit when I was in high school. But if like dad had died and he had a hundred million dollars to give me and gave me those stipulations, I'd have turned my shit around real quick, boy. Real yeah, that's a hell quick. of a carrot. Man. And then it's that, not that like you stop. Yeah, and then you then those become your habits and now you're just a good person. Right. Yeah, it hits for me too. Well, that's all I've got on inheritances. I'm very excited to talk about Julius Caesar with Professor Cho, which I suppose we will do right after this. It's a little chilly out there, I ain't gonna lie, but you know what's super warm? 
my ding dong, my wiener, because I'm using Blue Chew, baby. That's right. This episode is sponsored by our good friends over at Blue Chew, helping me get stiff in all the right ways. We all know that confidence can take you far in life, guys, and that's especially true in the bedroom when it comes time to step up to the plate, aka the crotchal region of the one you love, and that's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. However, it's chewable. Uh, and they don't cost near as much. You can take them anytime, day or night, or so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises, a get-down opportunity, that is. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part... It's all done online. You ain't got to go down to the pharmacy, see the girl that you used to work with uh, in in, uh, 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 journalism class and have her think that something's going on with your wiener, even though there ain't nothing going on with my wiener. But if there's something going on with your wiener, it'll help you you wiener. But if there ain't nothing wrong, it'll make your wiener be even better. They're made in the USA, by the way. Like you said, you can chew it, a.k.a. chew it and do it. I've been taking these SOBs for five years. My wife ain't going to let me go back. I promise you that. It it just gives you that... um, you don't have to worry <laughs> if if you're going to be in the right mood or if, you you know, like, oh, I don't know, I drank last night, so maybe it's not going to. It'll work, all right? I promise you it'll work, and it'll work like it's never worked before. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, chew it and do it. Have better sex, and we got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free, F-R-E-E. When you use our promo code POA at checkout, just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code POA to receive your first month for free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information, and we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Skew! Are you feeling stuck making minimum payments on your credit card debt? Savewithconrad.com can help, and you don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket to do this. NMLS number 65084, equal housing lender. Oh, and did I mention no house payments for two months? Get rid of your credit card debt and lower your monthly payments right now at savewithconrad.com. All right, we're back, Airheads. It's time once again for History of Professor Cho. I believe this is going to be part one of a two-part edition of Pro Cho, and we're talking about Julius yes. Caesar. Uh, you know, normally I say what I already know about him, and uh, I mean, I feel like I know a fair amount once you get talking about it, but obviously the main thing, he gets stabbed to death by all his boys, including his main boy, Bruce, yeah. and he says, et tu, Brute. And, uh, et tu, you know, Brute. And he yes. hit real hard. I will be asking you to do your bit later. Okay. All right. Yeah. How, yeah. Of course, I'm going to. And it may be in the next episode, but I'm going to because we probably won't get there. But uh, first off, the question I wanted to posit to you is that the correct use of that word? Uh, I think posit is making like a hypothesis about something. So I don't know if you can posit a question, but maybe pose question. I would pose to you. I I pose a question to you, and I would like you to posit it. Yeah. You know. You I guess maybe. Uh, when you think of Caesar, do you think of a pizza. horrible do what pizza? Yeah, five well, that's dollar a, hot and ready. <laughs> that's a fun fact that I was actually going to bring up about Caesar. So a lot of people don't know this, but he had a son who had a form of dwarfism, and because of that, everyone called him Little Caesar, and oh. he. In his boredom, because his dad was out doing all this conquering and shit, and he have, didn't have anything to do, he got super into baking, and he invented the pizza. Invented the pizza, specifically the time, the kind that you keep hot and ready. That's a very hot and ready and fun fact from history. It, uh, it, anyway, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's cool. Uh, he also was famous for creating a salad. Uh, mm-hmm. He had uh, uh, some lettuce, and he was just like, there's not enough protein. They were like, throw an egg in that, and he's like, it's not enough salty. He's like, throw some fish in that motherfucker. Boom, boom, boom. There you go. Caesar salad. But no, my my question to you was, when you think of Caesar, Julius Caesar, that is, do you think of a horrible, uh, deplorable dictator? Is that what comes to your mind? No, I mean, I'm I'm sure... 
and I know they're like, I'm sure he did a lot of fucked up stuff by like any kind of current standards, but by the standard of Roman emperors, no, I don't think, I don't consider him as being like Nero or Caligula or nothing like that. I thought he was like, you know, a pretty strong and capable ruler who, you know, then got taken out. But I'm being a ruler back then, I would assume means, you know, having and killing a bunch of slaves and things of that yeah. nature. But, you know, you'll have that. Uh, well, so am I wrong about that? Was no, he a no, huge no, no, piece you're, of shit? no, 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 no. I mean, you're not wrong in thinking that. And I think the general uh, discourse on Caesar is like, yeah, great ruler, blah, 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 blah. But like, I mean, as we're going to read here, he did a fair amount of borderline genocide. <laughs> and it just it just seems to me just that scotch. like... Just a touch if, of genocide. I, what I'm going to say, casual genocide here and there. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm going to say here is that I am positing that if Hitler had been born a thousand years before he was born, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I well, don't know. And this I, is Hitler sucks. Right. No, this is a major throwback, but we actually, on a really old episode of the Well Read podcast, we talked about basically this idea where it was like, do you, because I was asking, because I was talking about the Genghis Grill, which is a like, yeah, mall, yes. fucking a mall institution of like, which you know, Mongolian grills. I love the Genghis Grill, but it's got a little cartoon Mongolian guy, or at least I feel like it did right. at the time. And it was like, and so my whole thing was like, do you think it wasn't if Hitler was further back? My thing was, do you think in like a thousand years, like when we get right. super far removed from Hitler, will there be fucking, you know, Hitler, uh, hibachi schnitzel, like Hitler yeah, right. schnitzel, hit, hit schnell. I don't know. I'm not, you know, we'll have to workshop that, but like, yeah, uh, yeah, some kind of chain restaurant with Hitler on it. It seems absolutely insane to suggest that, but like, with because dude, Genghis Khan, man. He fucked and killed everybody. everybody. Just the whole world he fucked and killed. And it's just like, he's all, I feel like he's seen as like a badass by a lot of people. Right. You know what I mean? And it's of like, course. Hitler should never be seen as a badass. I'm not <laughs> suggesting or saying no. that he should, but, I, but it's but like, he did the when same you look shit. at these other guys and the way they are viewed by history now, I think it's a fair question, but it's like right. Hitler was in the mo Hitler, it was video, it was a whole new era yeah, of everything, it's, it's, you know? Exactly. Which I think will probably change that. But I do think it's an interesting question because it is wild to look at how we look at these, like, ruthless genocidal dictators of old. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that you, you actually just said because we're in the age of video, and now I know this is 100% going to be a two-parter, maybe even a three-parter, because I want to ask you this question. We talk about being in the age of video and stuff, and, like, Caesar has like this insane mythology around him. You know, he conquered this, he conquered that. He was a he was brutal but fair. He was intelligent. I mean, dude, he like Caesar's military endeavors have been studied for years and are still used in combat today. Like Robert E. Lee, who Fuck the Confederacy, all that, but nobody denies that Robert E. Lee yeah. wasn't the shit because I mean, li I mean, the Union tried to recruit him. Like he was literally right. in play. He he was like Urban Meyer in 2012. Like everybody wanted him, and he's just like, yeah. eh, yeah, whatever. So like, but Robert E. Lee studied the moves of Julius Caesar, and he was like a, he was like a, uh, um, a prodigy. Like he just grew up and he just, he knew how to do war, which like is so crazy to me that like some people just know war. Mm -hmm. Like they just, they just get war. Like there'd be like 16 year old soldiers that just get in there and they just like, they just can play. You know what I mean? They just yeah. like, yeah, I got, I got it. War. Cause it's not just knowing how to shoot. It's knowing no. when to shoot, how to go over Like, well, and, Dude, and I think that like, and it's wild for war to be this thing for a person because it's also like, but I think that with almost everything you can come up with, there are some people who are just born with it. Like people who yeah, can right. just play, like you said, like, I mean, I think like being funny, like I think 
to I begin was with, that way with comedy, you're either yeah. born, you're either born funny or you're not. And then you can get better or worse from right. there and you have to work real hard or whatever. But it's like, you're either born super athletic or you're not. I think cooking is like that. I think like absolutely you can be born with it as a, some people just got it. Like they study right. and they work hard and all that, but like, they also just got it. You know, they just have a mind for that. It just clicks for them. And I think that works with pretty much everything. And it stands to reason that war would be the same way. But it's wild thinking about all the people who just had it in a particular field, but were never exposed to it or never attempted it their whole lives. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and all, so and many also people probably like, got it with war that never had to go to war. Yeah. But it's wild when someone gets exposed to the thing that they were born to do. And for some people, yes. it's conquering the world or whatever, yes, right. which is, a, that's, that shit is wild. You know, it's well, wild to think about. What's even crazier in Caesar's case, in my opinion, is that like nowadays, if you, if you are like a kid and you're interested in war, you could start reading about war from every account. You go Wikipedia, you go all this stuff, you start reading about General Lee, you start reading about Patton, you start reading about all this shit. Caesar and them, like they did, like there were, when Caesar is is around, like we're talking about he's born in 100 BC, right? Mm -hmm. Written accounts are not something that everybody has access to. A lot of this shit is on stone fucking tablets, right? So like, it's not like they could sit in their room and pull their iPad up and read. First off, Sung Tzu's fucking Art of War hasn't even been written yet. You know, like they like when at was a certain written? point. Did, did you look that? Did that come up while you were looking at this? Do you know? When uh, that no, I did. Because that not. was a long hey, ass time ago, too, right? Like big, <laughs> big, big, big Papa producer. Can you look up when Sung Tzu's The Art of War was written? It was definitely a long time ago. But like Caesar's whole era is basically like. Oh, it actually the says start. publication date fifth century BC. So actually, it had been. Oh written. wow, it was four hundred. Oh, wow, years. how wild is that shit to think about? The art of Holy war was four hundred years old when Caesar came about. That's fucking wow. Crazy. Yeah, because another thing that I want to talk about Caesar, and we definitely mentioned this on the Cleopatra episode, but Cleopatra and Caesar obviously are linked together, and so I wanted to bring it up for anybody that didn't know this. Um, Caesar is closer to us today than he was to the building of the pyramids. Right. So yeah. time be wild as shit. So wild. Um, but, so wild. Because, yeah, like you said, people say that about point, Cleopatra, which makes sense because she was Egypt, but Caesar was fucking Cleopatra. Right. So obviously He was fucking true. Cleopatra. So it's true for him as well. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, he fucked her when he was, uh, and this is way down in my notes we're going to talk about. He fucked her when he was 52 and she was 20. And he was just so enthralled with everything that she had going on that, which a lot of this basically led to the fall of the Romans because he was just like, no, nah, I'm going to do my shit in Egypt. You know what I mean? I'm hitting over here in Egypt doing all this stuff. But Uh huh. Yeah, fifth century. AC. That's fucking. That is, that is crazy because like you wouldn't even think that things were recorded then. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 How about the BPP coming in and hitting for us? Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank no, you, but BPP. dude, that's one thing. Like in the West, we kind of just largely ignore. Chinese history and stuff like that, but it's of fucking course. crazy too how far oh, back yeah, it goes it and the stuff they were doing when they were doing it. You know what I mean? Is wild. We just, if you grow up in the West, we just kind of ignore all that shit. You and, might generally and, know about Sun Tzu or that they invented fireworks or whatever, but that's about as far as it goes. But I mean, yeah, they was, you know, they was doing their thing for a long time. Am I, am I allowed? Do you consider the ancient Chinese fancy? They had a I bunch mean, of like their, dragon art know, and stuff. Emperors and shit was fancy, yeah. I'd okay, love for you well, to should... get into some of that stuff because I don't know me, much about it. Me too. I've always found it hard as a person with my accent to talk about ancient Chinese people uh, without sounding racist. Mm -hmm. Just like I, I feel like I could just be giving facts and just be like, 
man, he's goddamn Chinese motherfucker. You know what I mean? It just doesn't sound yeah, good. That will but happen I, for sure when that, we talk. Yeah. About so we'll just <laughs> we'll just we'll well, just have okay. to, we'll just have to let that go. Uh, but the question that I wanted to posit to you after that was Caesar. I, now that I'm researching all this stuff on Caesar, and I'm seeing the atrocious war crimes that this person committed that kind of fly under the radar or it's just accepted. It's just like, look, man, if you're going to be this guy, you're going to commit war crimes, which for the record, I agree. Like whenever, like even, even we don't get political on the show, but even like Trump, when they start talking about war crimes, I'm like, dude, listen, war crimes come with the presidency. Like they just come with the presidency. If you're the president of the United States, you've probably inherited a war and then you're going to commit some war crimes because Fuck, man. What ain't it? Like, it's didn't just wild to me to have a bit or maybe not a bit, but didn't you used to have a thing about like the idea that war crimes is kind of a funny term it, yes. to begin with because it's like yes. it's a war. Like, it's it's all a war. pretty bad, you know, obviously. That, it's like, you I, know, I, it all seems kind of criminal depending on the war right. you're talking about. Yeah, right. From my, I mean, from uh, what I was told was that all is fair in that and in love, you mm -hmm. know. But like, it is funny because it's like, in war, you could do a really horrible thing, but as long as it falls within these guidelines, they're just like, that's war. But if you just step right outside the guidelines and do the exact same thing and kill the exact same amount of people, they're like, that's a war crime because you weren't in this zone and you did it. Like, so in my opinion, it's like, look, man, you can't glorify war. It, to, to say something's a war crime is to glorify war. War is horrible. War sucks. But my point is, and this is what I wanted to ask you, and we will eventually be wrapping up probably on this because this is just going to be an overview on Caesar, what we think about Caesar before we get into the real meat of it, is that do you think that we're done with mythologizing people in the sense of because mm. Caesar was back because Caesar was back then, He's mythologized because all we know about him was the stuff that they carved on a fucking brick. They didn't have it. And this is where I'm getting to your bit. When I told you earlier that I was going to make you do your bit, it wasn't just offhand. I'm setting you up for it. So like people like Caesar, people like Attila the Hun, all these people, all their achievements were recorded. And those are the things that make the stories. Those are the things that end up in the poems, end up in the fables, end up in the movies or whatever. But we just kind of ignore all the dumb shit that they probably did. It's not like human beings are any different nowadays. We're all the same. We all do dumb shit. It, the, only, the only difference is Caesar, Attila the Hun, all these people didn't have a Twitter. Therefore, they, we didn't have a 24-hour account of the dumb shit that they did. Only their hidden stuff got recorded because that's what people would fucking tell. Do you feel me? Yeah, I think you're on to something. So the, the joke in particular, I used to have a bit about like uh, how different we would look at shit if Twitter had always existed, if we had Twitter from throughout history. And I gave multiple examples. We told another one on the show about uh, Marie Antoinette when we did that episode. But another one was a tweet from, you know, 100-ish BC. It's like... uh damn brutus that shit was cold blooded hashtag <laughs> et to homie and uh yeah. but uh the i do i think we're done mythologizing people no i don't but i don't know maybe now we're in the social media era for sure but like sorry to the bpp here and we don't get political we don't have to elaborate on this but Ronald Reagan is mythologized as a motherfucker, right? And That's true, he but he came very before much the Twitter I know, he, era. Came, he came before social media, you're right. So social media might mark the end of that, possibly. You know, but I think it also depends on whether you are on Twitter or not. Well, now, this is a bad example. I was thinking, like, I was going to say Tom Brady is going to be mythologized forever, but, like, he kind of totally earned it and deserves it. Of course. No, in sport, <laughs> you know because, I mean? you're so all, like, because the only things that they're going to write about him are the sports things. And in right. sport, like, you cannot like Tom Brady's podcast. You cannot like Tom Brady's relationship with his wife. You cannot like Tom Brady's politics. But if we're just talking about scoreboard, NFL films in 200 years, if the NFL's around, is going to fucking talk about Tom Brady, and it's right. all going to be good. 
Well, another one, she would never have been mythologized anyway. She wasn't on that level, but a smaller scale example of what you're talking about, I think is, uh, cause she's somewhat in the news right now, Gina Carano, right? She was, mm -hmm. she had a place at the table in one of the biggest pop culture, you know, franchises that's ever existed. Maybe the biggest star Wars, right? uh that she was about to have her own series with that and all that stuff and if social media did not exist yeah or if she it. wasn't on it she would be like a face of star wars which never right. goes away right like that was set to happen but social media does exist and she got on there and got real mm -hmm. wild with it and refused to not and you know now she's making movies that gross eight hundred dollars uh and that n seemed to hit for literally no one so <laughs> yeah right yeah I, I think the biggest example of this to me would be somebody like Elon Musk. Because yeah. if oh, that's a Elon, great example. That that's if, exactly what you're talking that's about. That's the yes. example. If yeah. Elon Musk had died ten years ago, his legacy would forever be he was dude, and we talk about this all the time. He was considered a real life Iron Man Tony who was Stark, gonna yeah. stint Tony Stark. And that's what everybody on both sides of the yeah. aisle felt about him. He I bought into that, dude. Me I too. thought he was like that. Yeah. He was one of the rare, very popular billionaires who the left loved because of all his things of like electronic cars and Mars and energy and blah, 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 blah. And the right love because he was fucking rich and capitalizing on a bunch of shit. And if 10 years ago he had died or... If he never once got on social media, that's it. If he never once got on social media exactly. in 200, 300 years, the story of Elon Musk would be this was a wonderful, important man from this time. But now there's no way that it's not going to be marred by he bought Twitter and then started taking advice from a person whose username was cat turd, mm -hmm. right? Like it can't. So my so going back to your bit, like there's no doubt that Caesar was no better than any of these people. He definitely did some fucking dumb shit. He did some cringy shit, but you're never going to hear about it because his fucking water boy didn't go immediately to Reddit and type right. a thing. Well, another so, example in the world, like you're t in the world of music. You know, if you watch the tremendous series Tales from the Tour Bus, just as one example, but uh, also we've all heard these stories. The but like a lot of those dudes in that the first season of that's about country music. A lot of those dudes in old country music, like they were huge in that world at the time. They were also many of them fucking lunatics, lunatics. drunken, yeah. pill addled unhinged. lunatics who were totally unhinged and would routinely fire guns over the heads of their employees and stuff like that, and were fucking wild wild but we didn't know about none of that shit whereas today kanye west right right musical genius everyone knows how fucking crazy he is he's a great example social media too. athletes are also like that like not not as far i mean some of them were lunatics but like kenny stabler incorrigible drunk used to party like a motherfucker did all kinds of drugs stuff like that and now Studied i don't the think playbook I don't, by the by light, the light of, the jukebox. of the jukebox exactly some legends have it he even would sober up by halftime on some games <laughs> but yeah uh right and now i don't think you could do that in the modern nfl anyway because everybody else is just so good i don't think it's feasible but i'm saying right. like but like people like Johnny Manziel or Brett Favre and stuff like that, like they're a relic of an old time. You would never, you ne used to, you would never have known any of that shit. You know right. about them now. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, I don't want to compare the snake to Brett Favre because Brett Favre ended up being a huge piece of shit, fucking over poor people. I bet that, you the snake Kenny probably. Stabler. Did some. no, he hits, Cho. I, I, I want <laughs> his legacy continues to hit. I don't want anything to be otherwise, but yeah, see, no, so you're lucky, you're right. lucky that Kenny Stabler died before he got a Twitter right. account. Absolutely, hey, you either die a hero, you know, I know, or live long enough to see yourself become a racist on Twitter. Like, that's, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, we live there's, in. there's so many dudes that I loved as a kid, and I'm genuinely thankful that they didn't grow old. They died and didn't grow old and get a Twitter account. Now I can separate like Brett. Like the thing about Brett Favre is, I don't fuck with him now because, dude, Jesus Christ. But 
I'm also not somebody that goes, my entire childhood was ruined. It wasn't. I still had those memories. Like, Mm -hmm. and it's difficult for like, now when I see Brett Favre, I have to remember that he's a piece of shit because I go, man, I watched so many games. But my, but my point is about Julius Caesar, and we're about to wrap this up. This is going to be a part one of Julius Caesar where we just, uh, uh, posit, uh, thoughts on mythology. But I just think, that we're basically done with the Caesars and the Attila, the Huns and all these people. Like the only thing that I could think, the only person in our generation that I truly think, whether you like him or not, that will in a couple hundred years be mythologized in a similar way is, and it's about to be Raven, Barack Obama. Mm. And only because he was the first black president. If he was the second, whatever. But like he was the first black president. I, I think it's still possible. I think you just have to either not be a lunatic or if you are a lunatic, stay off social media, which seems to be impossible now. But like, and he could you're talking about it. world leaders and stuff like that. And yeah, but like, and she far predates social media. But I mean, dude, Dolly Parton is a yep. living human Dolly. myth and a saint. You're right. And I and think she will remain so she will into the indefinite future. So she got again, a little bit of heat. She got a little bit of heat last year, but it didn't last because of her, because she has way too much power. Mm-hmm. And because she had, she, she has done more good than she has done bad. Do you know the thing that she got heat over? I thought you're, t- you're not talking about Dixie stampede, which wasn't last. No, year. no, no, no. Because she handled that with a plum. Yeah. I mean, she just was like, no, yeah, I- no, you're right. No, it was a, uh, she did a commercial for, I, it was like some like Uber company that was talking about, like it was a side hustle company and she wrote a brand new, she wrote a, 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 a sequel to working nine to five that was called five to nine talking about your side hustle or whatever and how everybody should be. Mm you know, working a lot for your side hustle. And a lot of people were like, Dolly, you know, you're basically contributing to the thought of people should be overworked. And really you should be focusing all that energy on the world is so fucked up that people have to have two jobs. We shouldn't have to have two jobs. If you want to have two jobs, great, but you're promoting the idea that it's something that should be and instead of something that can be, but she even came after that and was just like, I didn't even think about it like that. My bad. So I'm, I'm with you. Like Dolly Parton in 200 years, they will be like, can you believe this f- sweet angel was among us? Yeah. Yeah. I agree completely. So yeah, we just sort of, this is just an intro to the very, the idea and the mythology and the concept of Julius Caesar in this episode, but in the next at least one, if not two episodes of putting on airs, we'll be talking about the man himself and all of his, uh, all of his, uh, trappings and escapades and all that stuff. Yes, that's true. That's yes. That is what we'll be doing. And we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you stay tuned here for clearing the airs. And also as always, uh, well, download, subscribe, like watch us on YouTube. We genuinely feel like the show's better if you watch it. Uh, I think at least it's funny to see our outfits mm-hmm. and see our facial expressions. And as you know, you can do that. Uh, our YouTube is watchpoa.com. Continue to tell your friends. Continue to download and subscribe and all that stuff. And we really appreciate you. This is our favorite show. I think, I mean, I think I can speak for Trey, but I'll definitely speak for myself in saying I will not stop doing this show until I'm dead. Yeah, we'll hit. Which, you know, who's to say <laughs> how long that'll be for either of us. But yeah, yeah. Right. We'll keep it going. Yeah, that's All right. it. Love y'all. And love y'all. Stay fancy, motherfuckers. Stay fancy.